<laughs> Hi, folks. Howdy, y'all. Is that our lead in? Well, I don't know, Toodle, is it? <laughs> okay. Who are you? I I'm forget. Slick. You're Slick and yeah, I'm yeah. Toodle. Slick and Toodle. All right. <laughs> I'm really kind of fond of that, so. <laughs> I said we're going to have to get shirts one of these yeah, days. Yeah, Slick and Toodle. Oh, boy. <laughs> I always get stuck with a weird one. <laughs> I don't know why that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, in any case, guys. Happy thanks. Friday. <laughs> Happy Friday. We're that's, glad to be here. That's right. That's right. So on Wednesday, we kind of went through a pile of undesirable leathers, you know, things with some stretch marks and things with some bug bites and things with some warbles at the right, edge. Wrinkles and warbles, yeah. Yep, that didn't lay down. And so we we smoothed out. Those blemishes. Yes, we did. <laughs> With a slicker, which is where the nickname is. Uh, yeah, slick. Is, is, yeah, I slicked. Uh, you slicked some, and then I slicked some more, and then you tootled around on some tooling patterns. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and here we are. <laughs> there you have it. So, uh, Oh, yeah. We flattened this piece out. Remember we flattened that one out? Look how flat it stayed. Yeah. <laughs> well. So this is the piece that I took the... Um, the, the Toco, the Toco Pro, Pro yeah. to the back of it. And so now it's all nice and dry. So um, on Wednesday, you know, it was pretty splotchy because it was wet and drying. But man, didn't he feel that? That is slick. It's slick. slick. <laughs> nice job, slick. Yeah. So you can still see the nap. Like you can still see the grain, but it is smoothed out. So that is now, I would consider that pasted. Yeah. I pasted this yeah. back. Let's see what that That's is. That's nice. You can see it there. I'll turn it over. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So you can you can still see that grain, but you can't feel it anymore. It's no longer fuzzy. So it's nice and it's slick. It's perpendicular with the lens to see, how that, see if you can see how slick it is. That's oh, this. Shh, Anthony. Yeah. Can you see how slick that is? Can you see it? Just can you see it? it? Just look at it. <laughs> Anyways. It's slick, you it's, guys. It's very slick. Yeah. <laughs> Feels real good. I should have done something with the front, but that's all right. We didn't do the yeah. front with that one. There's one we just straightened out. Yep, so this one is just straightened. And it then... What did you call it? Warbles? It had warbles It had it. some warbles in it. I feel like, you know, sometimes you get... Especially with heavy leather. So, like, the thicker the leather, sometimes in the butt side, you know, where they carry their haunches, yeah. it can get a little warbly yeah. in the leather. Yeah. But, hey, you just slick it right down. You just yeah. spray it with some water. You take your slicker and you work it right out yeah. and you just lay that right down. Yeah, well, what you got there in your in your haunches that you're carrying around? Oh, I got warbles in my haunches. I got haunches. warbles in my haunches. <laughs> we just have all the catchphrases happening today. There are a lot today. of people wow. that are more warbly than others in their haunches. Uh, yeah. Have we lost any viewers yet? Are you yeah. guys? <laughs> nope. They're are you still they're hanging? Flying in quick. <laughs> all right. So what are we going to do today? Well, so today I think we're going to take some of the leather that we uh, tootled and slicked on and... <laughs> We're gonna make some stuff. Denny, Denny has all these adorable teeny little projects that, this is that the he's done. This cutest one, I think. Is it? I it's, like that. That's super cute. So this is just a little credit card or business card. I think you made this one for business card. Business cards and credit cards are not the same size. They're if, close. I think credit cards a little bit wider, which Probably. make it, or maybe, yeah, wider this way. But then business cards are longer. I have no credit. It doesn't matter. So I don't know. I have no credit. <laughs> He doesn't get those little plastic things. That's not true. So anyway, so we're going to make this. I'm apparently going to make this. I'll see what I can do. See if I can match Denny's perfection here. I, I this little cute guy. And we have a template. little pattern here. Perfect. For it. And then we've got a little key case. And of course, it's made for a left-handed person and not a right-handed person because Denny is left-handed. Okay. <laughs> I'm dyslexic, actually. I'm right-handed. <laughs> I just use my left hand for everything because I can't tell the difference. <laughs> I like it. So this one apparently has been around for a minute because it has been sunned. You can see yes, that. it, that's been hanging around for a while. These are just some little ideas you guys yeah. can use for some gifts on the holiday season. You it know? is. You know what? So the other day on uh, Friends of Springfield Leather on the Facebook page, somebody had posted at the ends of all of their belt strips. That they, so they'll tool a belt strip, and when they go to size it, obviously they always have a little piece that's left over. He uses that, and he makes a ring box out of it. Oh, and so nice. sometimes he'll tool a, a strip that's a little bit longer than what he needs, so that he'll have a little bit of a bigger box. He says he's paid for all the machinery in his shop by making those little boxes over the years. 
Wow. And I don't remember who you are, but that was a nifty idea. And that he makes is... these cute little lids for him with like leaves or just a little tooled thing on the top, just a little lid to go down. Or I think one of them was just like layers of leather that he had stacked and then um, sanded to where it was like a, some sort of like topographic map is kind of what it looked like, wow. like this little hill. Cool. But it was pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. So in any case, so guys, check that out because that's a, that's a really cool idea. Yeah. Everybody wonders what they're going to do with all their remnants. People call them scraps. So there are no scraps in leather. There are very few anyway. Very, yeah. very few scraps. You can use leather for everything. We do here in our shop. What is this? This is just a tiny little piece. Yeah, you're yeah. cutting out. All you need is a hand-sized piece of leather, and you can you can make this little key case. Yeah. But I did inform Denny this morning that keys are becoming obsolete in life. I don't. I literally don't carry any anymore. <laughs> what else could you put on those little hooks? Can you punch holes in your credit card and put them in there? Yeah, those are credit card hooks. <laughs> Seems like a great idea. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, yeah, fish hooks. Fish hooks? <laughs> I do have a lot of keychains. I've always been a keychain collector. And so now that I don't carry keys, it kind of bums me out because I have no reason to carry my keychains. <laughs> and I like them. <laughs> but I don't, I, I don't need them. I'll tell you what, though. <laughs> Keys may be becoming obsolete, but key fobs are a big deal around here. They are a big they deal. Are. We do sell a lot yeah. of key fobs. You know, but you can hang them. I mean, you can hang it off your bag, you know, if you're a bag maker, or even just as like a, a tag for your finished product. Like a key fob is a great way to add a little tag to yeah. your, your product yeah. with your logo on it that, that somebody just might carry or put somewhere so that other people see it. Yeah. Oh, that's... Yeah. Or they're just good giveaways. Put your initials on it, and that way yeah. when someone you know, steals have... a bag, they say, I got it. What's her name's bag? Because <laughs> I can tell because I got the initials That's right here. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, Denny, we better start cutting stuff okay. out. Otherwise, All we're right. not going to make it let's, anywhere today. Let's make one of these. Okay. Let's All do right. it. Let's just, and I've already slicked this piece of leather out, and you don't even have to slick it out. But we, but we did learn that if you have a piece of leather that has a slightly open grain to it, you know, it's not the tightest, most smooth, A-grade grain ever, just spritz it down with some water, take your glass slicker to it. You're going to make it into a nice, crisp, yeah. tight-grained, A-grade piece of leather. That's right. Yeah. And I'm not being very frugal here with this piece. I just cut this. I drew this right in the middle of that piece of leather. Yeah, you sure did. But that's all right. Don't tell anyone. I will. I'll cut this out. We've got a first-time viewer. Something Tiffany. I'm going to assume that your name is Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. Thanks for joining us. Glad you can make it. Probably a pretty good guess. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Nothing gets by Liz. And I, for those of you that watched us on, on Wednesday, we kind of went over some of the new Sergei tools that we brought in. Um, so I've got two of those that I'm going to be stamping some of these little pieces with today. The hexagon, of course, because y'all could have guessed that already. That's the one I'm going to choose. And then I grabbed the basket weave just because I like it. I like the Celtic knot. I need to get one of these. This is a good one. This would be a really great knife sheath basket weave. Okay, I'm going to take it. Tiffany says it's literally oh, the edge on this top part. Say what? Okay, no one will answer me. The H is used twice. Okay. Or just not at all, and then you can just use make the O sound. Right, because the A in there is confusing me. <laughs> Ohio. I like Ohio. <laughs> I have a brother-in-law who's originally from Ohio. And that's what he says, Ahia. Ahia? Ahia. He's from Ahia. I feel like he's missing some enunciation. <laughs> he's missing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Actually, he's a pretty good guy. My mom was always one that said Missouri. And it kind of drove me crazy. Because Missouri, it doesn't have an A at the end. It's just an I. But, you know. And it didn't even make any sense because she's from Oklahoma. But maybe that's why. Oklahoma, Missouri, just kind of, that, that could be, I just figured it out, guys. I just solved my lifelong mystery why my mother can't pronounce Missouri now you correctly. Realize. <laughs> well, that's it for today, folks. <laughs> All right. I've made my discovery. Okay. Let's, did, you did not bring, I not bring any water? It's behind in? you. There's a, there's a spray bottle back there. 
But he didn't. He forgot his water. I did. What are we going to do with Toodle over there? <laughs> I'm going to make don't shirts. Know, slip. It's happening. Tony, we're making shirts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So what's our what's our border? Well, I'm going to make you, first off, let's make a little border here that's going to be for our lace. Okay. This going to be right or left hand. <laughs> You know what? For this one, it doesn't matter because it's, ambidex okay, it's I'll ambidextrous. I'll remember that. Okay. <laughs> but I said it doesn't matter. So, so we'll call that the front. Okay. Right there. Okay. Okay. Now let's make a little bigger border for our border because that was our, our lace border. our lace line. We'll go like this. See, look, look at him just tootling around that edge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Slick. <laughs> That's ready for you to stamp. Awesome. However you want to stamp. It. However I want. You're so you're so kind to let me do whatever I want. Would you like a straight edge, or are you just doing a border? You know what? I'm gonna make a fun hexagony shaped pattern, and then I'll come back around and I'll just do a a border. You probably didn't bring me one though. While well, you're stamping, I'll go get you a border here okay. in a minute. Okay. Yeah, I just need some sort of camouflage tool, if you don't mind. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. be back. I'm just going to start. So this is our new Liz, Sergei why did you choose a hexagon. Hexagon, because they're the bestagons. Uh, it's kind of... It there it is. There it is. It's very shiny. Look at look at those facets. <laughs> Sergei makes a really beautiful tool. Uh, so this is the 461. Yeah, for anybody that, you know, wants to learn about how hexagons are the best of gons, so you can just Google that and you'll bring up the YouTube video. Ah! As I mess up the first one. Just starting out a field out there in the middle of nowhere. I am, because I'm just going to make a little honeycomb out in the field. No kind of way pattern. Hopefully Denny gets me a good border tool. The best one. Is it gonna be a hexagon? <laughs> <clears throat> it is the strongest shape. Did you know that? Did you that's watch the video? Bees, yeah, that's why bees use it. That's right, because they're the smartest bugs. <laughs> or insects. Are they not a bug? Is that not the correct term? You gotta make all the beekeepers mad. I don't know, I have to go ask John. Did you, did you get me the best one, Denny? The best. Okay. Only the best for Slake. <laughs> Thanks. Uh-huh. So what are you gonna do? Well, let's see here. Why don't we make one of these little deals? All right, let's do that. Okay. I'm going to push this out of my way for a moment, since I don't need a piece of granite. And I'm just going to use that one that I've got there for a pattern. And there is a dandy little piece of leather. That's, that's a beautiful piece of leather. It is. Very nice. And I'm just going to use it, this old one, this one that's already made for a pattern. Chevy guy says hexagons can be great and all, but triangles can be a cute shape too. <laughs> <Acute>. <laughs> as long as it's not an obtuse triangle. How about an obese triangle? <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, I've got that drawn out. Well, something. 
Brock Lesnar tool and she threw it on the ground. That's not my tool. That's a line 20 snap setter. Uh, <laughs> we'll need that later. Maybe. Possibly. guys that hadn't noticed, this is not rocket science when I do stuff. <laughs> uh, Liz, Joshua asks, when lining up geometric shapes, do you line up the, li the lines previous, or how are you lining it up? Yes, I'm just lining it up with, this one kind of, you can set it inside the line mm -hmm. that you just went into. Or that you just made. So yeah, it depends on the stamp that you're using, how you mm -hmm. line it up. I'm gonna do one more, and I'm gonna call it. There, and that's that's the pattern I'm gonna do, and then I'm just gonna do a border, and then when you Pretty fold cool. it, yeah, that's cool. It'll just be kind of fun. Yeah, and there's really no rhyme or reason there. I kind of wish I'd put it maybe a little bit more at an angle, but it's all right. Oh, afterthoughts will <laughs> always confuse you. How do you like that? I use a slicker. Ooh. Angela, when we got done with our video on Wednesday, she said that she had gotten a chance to listen to a little bit of it as she was out there as the phones were quiet. And she said we were cracking her up. <laughs> <laughs> So that's really our number one job. Number two is leather. First of all, we just really try to be entertaining so that you would like to watch us for an hour. My wife is not interested in leather work in the least. But she loves to watch our videos. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Speaking of your wife, Denny. Yeah. yeah. I got some, some uh, pumpkin butter over here. On my desk. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Since she's watching... Since she's watching, I will tell her thank you. Okay. That way, if you forget, I've told her. I've already forgotten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we very much appreciate it. I'm excited to eat it. All uh, right. What weight of leather are you using? This is probably five ounce in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't, you know, you can make this stuff out of any weight you've got. A real heavy weight wouldn't be the most desirable thing, but it would still work. You know, for the little card case there, a heavier weight leather, you need a little, you need to expand your pattern a little bit. Yeah. Or get something really intense to stretch it out with. Yeah. <laughs> when you're yeah. done. Yeah. <clears throat> but this, I'm going to draw a line on it and you can stamp it. Oh, cool. I've got the perfect basket weave. All right. And since there's not going to be any lacing or stitching, I'm just going to pick a line in here. So those of you guys that join us for our live shopping and are Looking forward to Cyber Monday coming up when Tony and I will be doing five hours of live shopping. 
just so you know, we went to our warehouse yesterday. That's our little offsite warehouse. And we had a lot of fun picking out some upholstery leathers. And we've got some of like the pebble grain, um, the, the Saffiano kind of like cross the hatch. cross hatch body. It's like those double butts. Um, for those of you that have been doing the live shopping for a while, it's when Stacy did it with me it's months ago and we sold all those cool colors of the pebble grain leathers. We've got some of that that we'll be bringing over. We got some beautiful more and Gile backsides um, that we pulled and just some really nice colors. So we are coming up with quite a lineup for that Monday. So you guys start watching out. Um, next week we'll start announcing what hours we'll be doing what and maybe giving you a couple little hints here and there from stuff that we're, that we're going to be doing. Um, but, you know. For those of you that aren't doing anything else on Cyber Monday, except for shopping, you can just shop with us all day long. <laughs> you can get cyber here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this little deal here, I want to make out a piece of this green leather that we Ooh, made this bowling ball bag. Very nice. Of. I tried to put my belt on this morning that I made, but these pants aren't high enough, and I made the belt like a, a little high-waisted. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have to wait till I wear different pants to wear it. <laughs> Okay, so that that's, looks good. That's all done. All right. That's all right. That's fine. You gonna lace our hand stitches, right? Uh, we're gonna do some buck stitching, like that. Yeah. I've never buck stitched anything before. Ah, uh, today's the day. Today's the day. All right. So we shall I go ahead and stick this together? Yep. Or, okay. Uh. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go. Ahead. Let's see here. Yeah, that's ready to stick. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm cutting this little deal out. How shiny that blade is. I can see the pencil reflecting off of it. Off of what? Off your blade. Your round knife, your head knife. Yeah, that's, that's that's pretty shiny. Watch out for your fingertips. Thank you. I yeah. will. I keep telling everybody the key to this is keep the end of your knife end of your cutting surface. Don't ever let it float out. We don't want no floaters up in here. No floaters. Floaters draw blood. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to say. <laughs> I drew, I drew some blood yesterday as we were digging in those pallets. I cut my cut my oh, little hand did. open here. All right. Well, I lined up the edges, but this top little edge needs to be. All right. I'll trim it. Okay. I'll trim it, and you can stamp, stamp this. Stamp that. So this is the top, right? Because that's where it'll be. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is the top. Did I make it right or left handed? You made it right handed. All right. Good job. All right. I meant to do that too, <laughs> by the way. Um, gonna give myself a line on this one because it's the basket weave and I need something to follow. Now I have an array. No, do it straight. Do it on a diagonal. That's right. How many sides gonna... where whether we're carrying those head knives that you're using, Denny? That kind of uh, to my knowledge, nothing has been decided. Are we still waiting to on To my uh, knowledge, nothing has been decided about anything. Yeah. <laughs> we keep you in the but dark. But that's just me. <laughs> like a mushroom, Denny. Yeah. Just keep you in the dark. <laughs> in the forest. I like it here. <laughs> so you hung a, hung a tooth off? I hung one tooth off of it. You know who I learned that from? No, I hope you tell me. I learned it from Marvin. Marvin Nolte, our uh, good friend in Wyoming, who, yeah. who is here and uh, taught us all how to make bowls with leather. I had never, I always just kind of spaced it out a little bit, but I'd never thought about just hanging one tooth off. Yeah, I space out quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. 
<laughs> Unless it's got the giggles. <laughs> Slick. <laughs> yeah. Just got her all tickled with that one. Oh, what's a good time here? All right. I've got the little buck stitch holes punched there. Ow. And don't I, do that. That's, oh, good. You guys aren't watching me. Don't That's, do that. Don't do that. Okay, I'm just going to take a fid here after I get got these holes punched and just kind of stretch Tony, them we out can't really see bit. what Denny's doing. Sorry. Can you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just sticking it through these holes that I've already punched and just kind of stretching them out a little bit. It makes the... The lacing go easier. The lace go a lot easier. So you're going to Crystal Bridges tomorrow, and where, that's Bentonville? Mm-hmm, yep. Bentonville, Arkansas, the home of Walmart. Yep. It's a fancy little town. Yeah. I hadn't been there. We went... Uh, maybe a year ago or so, we went down to Crystal Bridges. Um, they have a Frank Lloyd Wright house there. So they literally have moved a Frank Lloyd Wright house and reconstructed it on the property. So you can see, you can see that. Um, and it's a neat little tour. But then it's just a, it's just a really beautiful museum. It is. Or art gallery. It is a museum. It is, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. a museum. Yeah. 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 Art museum. An art museum. Yes. I've been there two or three times and I really enjoy it. But, uh, we were there when they had uh, that Georgia O'Keeffe oh, yeah. display. That was really cool. And then when we went to to New Mexico a couple of years ago, we stopped by all the Georgia O'Keeffe stuff. Nice. It was neat. She was pretty extraordinary. Corey Jones says you need to figure out what size of the circle I need to cut the bowl. So Marvin's template that he had was eight and a half inches. When I made those Marvin bowls on that live shopping, we just made it. We clicked out eight inches, eight inch circles. I think you can make them whatever size you want. And, and uh, yeah. He was uh, the telling, smaller you make it, the smaller your bowl will be. Right. Well, and it depends on it depends on your two bowl forms too. Yeah. You know. What kind of yeah? What yeah. you're forming it around? Yeah. The the bigger you make it for a small form, the harder it's going to be to get rid of all your wrinkles and stuff. So you you kind of need to use your own judgment there. <laughs> Chad says, I have four bowls ready for a craft show tomorrow. Nice. All right. Yeah. Marvin will be thrilled to hear that. Uh-oh. Angela says she almost didn't know what to do with her lunch break yesterday since we weren't live. And <laughs> Terry and we Charles <laughs> were... <laughs> Memeing it up over here. Yeah. On Facebook they were. That was, that was pretty great. Yeah, I kind of forgot it was... Thursday, actually, because it's weird when you've been doing something for months to not do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to start buck stitching this while you're finishing that. All right. Yeah, this is going to take me a minute. And if I don't, you... Oh, sorry. I said if I don't, I won't know what to do with myself. Unless I sneak out of here and go get something else I forgot. <laughs> Chad said he used stainless steel bowls is what he was using. That was what Marvin was using, mixing bowls. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, because they always sell like those nesting bowls so you can... Mm-hmm. Oh, that is really smart. Uh, cedar barrel leather. He got one of the bowls that we gave away on that Twitch after party last week. Mm -hmm. He said he got it in. Nice. And it's awesome. <laughs> Mm. 
whenever I buck stitch, I just tuck the end of that lace under one. Uh huh. That way you don't have to tie a knot in it. Okay. But if, but if you notice, I took it over here and tapped that down. Yeah. It gets rid of that lump. Makes everything tight. Yeah. Cool. Now I'll just clip this off. If you wanted to work like right here, that'd be cool. <laughs> Is that a hint? Slick? Or are you trying to tell me something? Just, you know, in a slick way. <laughs> we ought to call you smooth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see here. Mark asks, any advice for creating a straight fold? Is there a tool for grooving the leather so that it folds precisely? Yes. Yeah. Uh, a V groover, V gouge. Mm -hmm. uh, you like to use your French edgers? I do. I like to uh, use my French edger. Uh, but first, I'll take a, a straight edge, like a ruler or something, and run a, a even. You can even use your a swivel knife and just make a, a light cut in your leather. Okay. In a straight line, and then use a French edger on each side of that. And it actually kind of makes a V groove. Nice. And it, it does kind of depend on, you know, how thick the leather is that you're starting with, how much you want to groove to allow it to, yeah. to fold. Yeah. If you're using a thin piece of leather, you really don't need a groove to speak of. You can just fold it and, uh, you know, use a straight edge. And a, a, a stylus, just, just make a... a Tickle a line in there. <laughs> you can it's use a tickler. tickler. I was going to say that, but I knew. Well, and then they make the freehand groovers as well. Yeah. Just the ones that don't have the guide on the edge of them. Yeah. I suppose you could remove the guide. Well, usually the yeah. guide is the blade, depending on yeah. the one that you're using. But then you can use, like if you are doing something thin and you just want a really light groove to make sure that your fold is to encourage a fold mm -hmm. in, a, in a specific spot, you can you can use a just a groover to get a, a light line. Are you trying to find something? Can I find something? Let, let me, I'll wet this piece of leather. And this is a piece of probably five ounce leather. But if you notice, I wetted it. Wetted it. Wetted it. Wetted it. Wetted it. Wetted it. Those are too many letters in that word. You got it yeah. wet. I got it you wet. You spritzed it. That's I what spritzed you normally it. say. Now let me use this uh, straight edge. And this is just a ballpoint stylus here. Ballpoint stylus. Yeah. And I'm just going to tickle a line in there. <laughs> now I've got a nice straight fold right there. Then you can take and tap that down. But you want to do that when it's wet. And yeah. not dry. Yeah, if you try to to fold a piece of vegetable tan leather when it's dry like this, make a tight fold in it, you will crack the edge of it almost every time. Yeah, you're gonna crack that grain. Water water allows the leather to stretch and to move. If it's just a dry piece of leather, it's just gonna break. Yeah. And you don't want that. That's right. But I just like like I said, I just use the straight edge and this ballpoint stylus and just made myself a line in there, a heavy line. And then you can even keep the straight edge up there and just fold against it. Oh, yeah. So that's one way. Another way, if I had a swivel knife in here, I would cut a, a slight cut in it and you could fold it easy that way. If it's a little heavier leather after I made that cut with a swivel knife, then I would use the French edger on each side of that just to take a little bit of the thickness out of here right where the edge is but the trick is to make a straight fold you've got to have a straight edge in there to fold it against so this straight edge is what you need to fold against anyway I'll shut up <laughs> get back to buck stitching get back to buck stitching I don't want to do too much though because I want you to do the biggest part of this okay well I am getting close to having my basket we've done if you want to you can do the border for me if you want I will do that okay we'll just try it. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm tootling over here yeah. <laughs> it's been a name change. We'll trade names. Okay. It'll be Toodle or Slick. 
You'd be a slick doodle. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have a slick tool, you'll drop it on the floor. <laughs> oh, you moved away over there, Liz. Did I? I don't know. I just tootled around. It is one of my favorite words. <laughs> you know, if, I, if I'm trying to tell somebody to go slow, or... To, to not be so slow, I can just say stop tootling. And it, and it sounds nicer than stop being slow. <laughs> <laughs> or stop goofing around. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that was a little off kilter. Palmero, New York says, I just got in for the live stream. says, I used 13 ounce leather to make fire helmet shields. Woo! I would like to make them stiffer. That they are. Is there a product that he could use to make it stiffer? Uh, if you will wet the leather and slick it good with a with a slicker, it will add a little bit of uh, body to your leather. Plus, I've heard of people actually heating it in an oven. You don't want to get it. You don't want to cook it. Put it on. Water. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, but if it's wet and then you, you dry it in a, in a warm oven, say 200 degrees or something. Yeah. Where's that piece? That piece right there. This one? No, another one. That one. That's pretty. That's... I mean, it's pretty thick, but you wet it and you slicked it. I mean, it's got. It's pretty firm. It's yeah. stiff. It feels stiffer than like this piece, even if they're the same way. Yeah. You know, they, it feels. Is there something? Is there something called boiled leather? Like, do they do boiled leather armor? Why am I? Uh, that's, that's yeah, yeah. That does sound familiar. And and I've heard of a lot of people using a, a beeswax uh, mixture and uh, yeah, and getting that hot. And then when it cools down, it'll add. Some guys, we got some knowledge that walked in the door, Kevin. No, no, Kevin. I just, uh, oh, I heard that you guys were trying to fill people. For, I mean, uh, you're trying to instruct people. <laughs> And some techniques. I think them. I think what you mistakenly heard is probably more what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you doing? Oh, we're just using some, uh, we call it some leather that might have been a little bit undesirable. <laughs> you know, like some, some leather with, with you mean some wrinkles. People, and people some, think is undesirable. Yeah, yeah. exactly. With some uh, wrinkles and some bug bites and uh, yeah, I get that. I'm glad to see you're doing that, you guys, because uh, it's always been one of my pet peeves. You know, we, we, we get a phone, well, we get a letter or a phone call or a post that says, I got a side from you guys, it was completely unusable. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Makes yeah. me want to retire. <laughs> <laughs> Keep <laughs> plugging. Keep <laughs> plugging, Kevin. Hi, <laughs> Kevin. How are you doing? I, I'm doing good. You just got to go one way and yeah, make it lay the just, right way, and then you come back. Just a spiral. Up. Yeah. Just a spiral. So, I think I think I got it. Boink. And, yeah, and a lot of people think you need to make angled holes to do that with, but I found that a straight slot will yep, will does. make a lot prettier diamond shape to your uh, to your buck stitch than if you use a diamond or a, a uh, angled. Yep, so you just want to make sure that it's laying with the face side out on each side. Yeah. So yeah, like I say, it just spirals around. Yep. We were saying, you talked a little bit about boiled. Boiled leather is not actually boiled. If you, if you boil leather, you basically are cooking the leather, you know. If you boil it long enough, it doesn't take as long to chew it up. <laughs> <laughs> It's about like having your steak well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, got some stew meat in there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Have your have your have your steak well done, or just chew on a piece of rawhide. Yep. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. Let me find a call. Oh, beef jerky. <laughs> what do you need? A piece of paper, just a piece of copy paper, or anything. This will. I mean, that's a piece of leather. Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, here you go. There you are. All right. I just wanted a piece of paper to put down here so I didn't get oil all over. Do we have a buck stitching video? I feel like that's probably something that we've done. I don't, rem I don't remember doing one. We had that double loop lace. 
You did one and Kevin did one, but I don't think we did one on Buck. Just Buck stitching. It has it in there. But basically, yeah, so Denny, what did you do? You used just this chisel. So he just yeah. used a four prong lacing chisel. So Mine I'm assuming this is the eighth inch. That's an eighth inch. Yep. It depends on what size lace you're going to buck stitch. With. We've got eighth inch lace. So we're using an eighth inch chisel. Pretty straightforward. And then he just chiseled out the lines here. And then, like he said, he took and wallered them out a little bit with his. <laughs> wallered them out. He wallered them out with not a fid. A fid. This guy. Just whatever lacing fid or. I don't know if you've got an ice pick. Or, ice pick or, or a, modeling, a modeling tool mm -hmm. will work. Something that is a graduated point that you can put in there and waller it out. Yeah. And you really don't even have to do that. I just do it because it makes it so much easier to pull your needle through. Here's and, another question. We, and then, hey, Mass Toaster's back. Welcome, Mass Toaster. What's up? Seems familiar. She has a question about how this one we get kind of a lot. How do I know what lace I can buck stitch with? Some of them say buck stitch. Buck stitch, buck stitch is a stitch, not really a lace, right? Or <sighs> well, so we sell buck stitch lace, but it's like a quarter inch. Usually, buck stitch lace is a wider lace, which is kind of ironic because they don't actually make chisels in that width. Yeah. To do. Yeah. To do buck that. Buck stitch traditionally was three sixteenths, I think. Okay. And. And uh, I've never seen a three sixteenths chisel. Yeah, it doesn't. In my life, it's very it's a it's a strange phenomenon. Yeah. People call all the time, and they're like, "Well, I need a quarter inch because I need I'm going to use quarter inch lace and I'm buck stitching." And I tell them to grind down, um, you know, like a, a flathead screwdriver. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that will sure work. <laughs> and then drive it through your leather, but then you're just doing one at a time. Yeah. But it would be really difficult to have a quarter inch chisel. Yes. That was multi pronged because most yeah. likely you just break that anytime yeah. you go to use it. Yeah. But 99% of all the buck stitch you'll see nowadays is eighth inch. Yeah. Because that, that's plenty. You, you have a good, a good bit of lace there. So, so, you know, you can use what you want. You can use a 330 seconds lace if you want to. Yep. You know, it depends on the project you're doing. If you're doing a bigger project, you want a bigger lace, you know. So oh, Denny, when you're, when you're doing... You're supposed to let go of your needle. It depends on who you're talking to. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> that video well, Kevin did, he was adamant about that. I'm yes. just watching Liz put it down over and over. Yes. This, this lace is really long for what's happening here. Yeah. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Well, <laughs> I wanted you to have plenty. Ball. I wanted you to have plenty. Thank you, thank you. Oh, I can't see what you're doing. Well, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Maybe that's a good reason not to show you. <laughs> Once he figures it out, he'll let us know. All right. I'm just going to rivet this uh, little batch of key hooks on this uh, thing. And I'm just going to use black since I, I don't have any silver. I've got to. Well, I've got a, I've got a gold set of these hooks. I'll just use them since I've got gold colored See here. pop rivets. So okay, okay, okay. Let's go back. Let's take our fid wherever I put it and loosen up this lap. It doesn't look as good as yours. It okay. looks a little flat. Uh, you're okay. Well, we aren't done yet. Okay. Okay, go back through this hole. Okay. Might need, to, it might need to stretch that hole out a little bit to get back through there. I got it. So you've got a 50-50 chance of ending up with the right number of holes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, okay. But but you've got a double back stitch here, but that's okay. So now we'll take uh, just take the end of your lace. We'll just tuck it under that last loop that you've got here. Then we'll clip that off. 
and then now, tap it down. Now tap it down, and you will see that your lace looks as good as as yours. Mmm. See that just seats your lace down. Mm-hmm. Makes it all nice and flat. Very nice. Looks good. There we go. So I'd probably throw some oil on it at this point. Well, and then yeah, just well, gum drag. Yeah, why don't you bevel bevel the edge of it? Aye, aye, Captain. You can Let's rub. Let's show you ring off real quick. Everybody's like, we had a question okay. about what your ring was. Okay. Which it doesn't matter. Sure, both of them. Okay. They're both just sterling. This one's got some turquoise in it. This this one doesn't. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> wow. Good. So, <laughs> I like. Nice. Very nice. There you go. Okay, you're doing that. Let's hear. So Harley asked if there's an all-around leather that you would recommend to anyone that's just getting started in the craft. No, because it depends on what you want to make. Yeah. I, like right. Yeah, so if, if you have a project in mind, we can definitely make some recommendations, but depending on what you're wanting to do, or if, I mean, if you're wanting to tool and, and do this kind of leather work, we're going to recommend Herman Oak all day long, and then just the thickness is going to depend on what you're making. Um, but if you're wanting to make, like, bags or shoes or pouches or things, you know, there's an array of different leathers that you can use that are finished that you don't have to, to you know, manipulate this way that you could use. So if, you're, if you have a project in mind, maybe give us a holler with that, and we can make some, we can make some suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> that was really yeah. Come on, slick. I know. It it wasn't very slick. <laughs> you did good. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and Matt's toaster wants to know about piped edges. He said he's been using some four to five millimeter leather cord. I'm tired of buying it. Uh, <laughs> you know what we use? Yeah. <laughs> Weed eater cord. You can you can Use a piece of, uh, just cut yourself a square piece of leather, you know, a, a square strip of leather. If it's an eighth inch, eighth inch thick, cut yourself an eighth inch wide piece of it and use an edge beveler and round that edge off. That sounds like a lot of work, Denny. It is a lot of work. Uh, if you're wanting to, you know, it just depends on how big a piece that you're wanting and how thick a piece of leather you need to use. There's a lot of different ways. The piece of wood that he's talking about is is kind of like a rain rounder, which is a which is a metal tool. Mm -hmm. That have. was kind of his next question. Was is he? Um, I wanted to make a round handle, kind of like we did on the bowling ball bag, mm -hmm. with a larger size cord. Sometimes I'll wrap it or wrap leather around a piece of rope. Yeah. But you've got a little fancy tool we need to take off and bring in here one day. And yeah, it's called a rain rounder. It's just a a piece of metal that opens like a like a trap, but it's got little round holes in it when you close it up, and, and you can just pull the leather through it. If the leather's wet, uh, you know, you can change the shape of it into a round shape, you know. But to, like, to make a round piece of cord, let's just say you're using this. You can just glue your leather around whatever whatever you want to use and stitch this line right here just right up it right up against this uh, this cord or whatever you've got inside your leather as tight as you can cut it off real short take an edge beveler and bevel those sharp edges off then you can just take and, and rub it rub it uh, rub it like this while it's wet and you can oh. you can actually just rub, like what Spencer kind of did. Round. Yeah, you can yeah. roll it round. Or you can get a rain rounder and pull it through the rain rounder. Or you can buy cotton cord. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or weed eater line is pretty cheap for lots of I would say the weed eater line isn't going to get as thick as as like the to make those handles, but you can buy like pretty darn thick um, cotton, cotton rope. Yeah, cotton rope at just a local fabric store. Yeah, or even I think Lowe's has some for. Yeah, stuff up. I don't or even need to Home pour any out. Or Thanks. whatever your local place is. I'm just oiling my pants over here. <laughs> yeah, they're turning darker green. Let's, let's whip this just a little bit. Not her pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to stick this in here and just kind of... Mm. Waller that open, out. <laughs> open it up a little bit. <laughs> a great shot of your uh, water spritzer. <laughs> 
these in here. And we'll call this the finish side since this is just a rub stick, bone folder, or whatever you've got. Look at that. Makes the cards fit perfect. You do that on one side or you do it on both sides? I'm just doing it on one side. That way the other side's kind of flat. And this top side's kind of a molded. Kind of have a, a f making a front and a back to it. Yeah. That looks pretty good, don't you there think? Go. I do. Pretty fancy. I like the little hexagon. Yep, so we'll just let that dry here a little bit, and then I'll probably just gum trag the whole thing. Yeah, but put it there on the, on the middle of his, where he just went out. You can see what we did with the rub stick there. So you're going to see. Yeah, you can see the bottom of it's pretty much flat. This, this side here mm -hmm. is flat, and this side here is the one that's got the shape to it. But after that dries, it'll stay like that. Yep. You know, just put as many cards as you can stuff in there. <laughs> All righty. That'd be a cute little gift. It would be. You know, a little simple gift. You know, I need one of these. I've got this pile of cards oh. that oh. need a that need a, a house to live in. All right. Let's try to put this deal on. This is what I started to do a while ago. So if that. anybody wants or is curious, this is a key plate with six hooks. And the item number is 85-1004. I do believe we also have a nickel version of it. And I'm sure the yes, number is do. almost exactly the same except for that four on there. So if you just type in 85-100, you'll get all the options. Uh, will you, I'm assuming. Uh, the hexagon stamp one more time. The hexagon is 932-461. you got to call in right now to get that one. Yep, call in this, this new little batch that we went over on Wednesday. If you're curious about our new batch of Sergei stamps, you can go to the end of the video on Wednesday, and we kind of show you all of them. Um, so you can check those out and then give us a call. We're still working on finalizing our uh, website listings, or if you, you know, wanted to wait like a week or two, they'll be up on the website at some point. Yeah, you tried to say the end of the week. No, I think I... You did say that. Did yeah. I... I take that back. All right, I got the little hooks on there. Now I'm going to put a little snap on there. Well, Denny, you didn't do the border. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> you had one job. Uh, I one job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. It's all right. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It'll, it'll be borderless. Be right. It's fine. Borderless. <laughs> it's the borderless basket weave. Oh, boy. As we all know, basket weave should, should all have borders because yeah. they don't look so great on the edges. So you have to camouflage the edges. They're so smart with those tool names. <laughs> and I don't have any bright brass snaps in here, so I'm going to use this antique brass. Man, waiting for things to dry is terrible. Yeah. And this is just a, a line 20 snap. Yeah, how much more special is it? A lot of people give gift cards for, you know, holidays or just gifts in general, but as much as I like just money to do whatever with. That's a good one. As so, much as you love as, that. as much as that's great. Sometimes it just feels a little impersonal. So, you know, make a little card holder that you can yeah. give said person. Maybe yeah. stamp their name on it or do a little design that they think is cute. You know, a little flower, stamp a skull or whatever it is that that person is into. Just to give them a little something extra that you just take five minutes on and, and do that instead of just a little gift card and a piece of paper that it comes in. Uh, remnants? Especially if you're giving them a gift card to, you know, like Springfield Leather, which you can do. Look at that. Voila. <laughs> well, that's pretty easy. Pretty easy. All right, and I'm not going to go through this on this key deal. You know what? You could turn this into a coin pouch really easily if you just sewed up these two sides. You could buck stitch, though. You could buck stitch! <laughs> then yeah. you wouldn't have to worry about, does anybody carry change anymore? 
Oh man. Uh, change is also obsolete. Yeah, okay. It's obsolete too. <laughs> <laughs> Poker chips. <laughs> oh, can you fit, can you fit uh, business cards in that? Is it wide enough to do business cards? You can make it wide enough. You can make it this, wide enough. Okay, we got tight, but we've got two business card holders: <laughs> one with a snap and one without. <laughs> yeah, but just any sort of little pouch that could be a little, you know, for your kids, a little rock pouch. They have those new. It'd digital, be a really small. They have those new digital business card things, and it's like a it's like a credit card thing, and you like tap it on somebody's phone, and then it, then you pop up on a contact on their phone uh, yeah. as your business contact. So business cards are about to be obsolete too, I suppose. Man, <laughs> I'm just wasting your oh, time today. <laughs> We're all in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So if you've watched this far in the video, quit watching. It's all obsolete. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Nobody uses anything physical yeah. anymore. It's all digital. Holly came over to me. She's like, hey, Tony, there's somebody that's taken a, a tour out there. And I told them they could come in after the video. I said, why after the video? Why don't you just come in during the video? Yeah, they yeah. said they were going to be here. You commented on their... Who yeah. was that? I, I don't, don't start me to lie. <laughs> yeah. Then Terry was like, how come I don't ever get the invitation? I'm like, Terry, the invitation is always open to you. You know when we're here, you can just show up. Yeah, Carrie, plus he Carrie. has his leather that he's paid for that he hasn't ever picked up. I'd probably just resell it while he's here, <laughs> even though he's bought it. Who are you talking about? <laughs> Terry Beeson. Terry Beeson. <laughs> yeah, Terry ought to come in. All right, well, what else you got over there? That's about all I've got. We have this other key holder. Oh, I thought we were going to do something okay, other than that. <laughs> well, oh, let's, guys. Let's finish. Let's kind of rub the edge of this a little okay. bit. This is a green leather that we use to make our bowling bag. Yeah, I really like this stamp. She carries change. I always wind up with a lot of change, which is always really confusing to me because I hardly ever use cash. But somehow my purse is always full of change at the bottom and I really don't get it. Or like my car cup holders are perpetually full of change. But I never use cash. It's pretty confounding. I keep quarters in my... Uh, on my... Uh, Console mm -hmm. for Aldi's. Uh, when you go to Aldi's, you, you gotta, gotta have a quarter for their shopping cart. I do. Yeah. I have one that's my center console. My, my, my one quarter. Like Allie, Allison keeps trying to take, and I'm like, no, you have to leave that there. Otherwise, I can't use a cart. <laughs> I just, I just grab like a million shopping bags and then just put everything in my shopping bags and then check out. Look, you don't even have to use a border tool on that. You just put an extra line. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is this is vegetable tan leather. It I'm is, gonna, you can stamp I'm gonna it. I'm going to put a border on that. <laughs> we'll fix it now. You can put a border on the other one, Liz? Um, I mean, we've oh, already yeah. got... It'd be difficult. Yes. What's... Oh, it'd be hard. Oh. Come on, you can do it. Tony's such a... Just Tony. I'm such a guy. <laughs> such a nice guy. Yeah, except nobody ever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any more questions over there? Oh, here, give me the other one. <laughs> get back to the key. Oh, I have the only border stamp. Just kidding. I'm done. You're done. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Terry says, hey, don't be selling my stuff. You already cheated me out of that denim elephant print. Tori said she would share it with you. This stuff stamps easy. It does. Everybody always wonders about drum dyed veg tan leather. As long as it's not finished. You can stamp it. Turns that, out you can't. Yeah. I mean, it really like, so if you're talking about like bridal leathers, those have a finish on the top of them. But there are, um, if you get an unfinished veg, like our, our black and brown Herman Oak uh, collar leathers that we sell, those still accept moisture and water. So you can still stamp them. Um, but like our our <laughs> colored, I was going to say we have the colored veggies. Yeah. Those are finished leathers though, so they're not going to accept a stamp. The, yeah, those other colored veggies we have like pink, a the red, pink, a blue, and a green. green. Yeah. They're not, and they're not a Herman Oak one. No. But they're very nice and they make really nice stuff. Mm -hmm. They're just non-toolable, yep. I have some of the paint right over there. What are you doing with it? Mm. I cut it out for another Twitch streamer, and I was, we were going to do a 
uh, collaboration. Mm. Right. If you really want to. There's She's in Canada, though, so it's kind of hard getting stuff there. Yeah, that's true. Canada's pretty far out of the way. <laughs> so we were trying to make sure that she had everything that she would kind of need to do something with so we could send it all in one package. Gotcha. Instead of multiple ones. Yeah. You could use that for key, keys, or we talked about, Denny, you can make it a, like a leather taco. You can put your ear earphones in, your headphones. Yeah. But now everybody has Bluetooth ones, so they have live little they, AirPods. They charge. Here, so now you can't have, yeah, can't use it. those either. Obsolete never too. Obsolete again. Yeah, never mind. We're just joking. <laughs> Well, so one thing that we, so we've got this little board over here that's just been hanging out. So this is something that uh, one of the girls that used to work in our R&D department put together a while ago. And it's just a, a board of sample handles and pulls that <laughs> one could make out of little pieces of leather or small strips of leather um, to use as like cabinet accessories. So you've got this like little wooden dowel that's been screwed in using um, just a couple little pieces of leather. This this one is just looped. And then we just went we just went to the hardware store and we got these uh, bolts that have these washers behind them so that the leather won't pull through. Um, so you just got a loop that you just put a finger in there and pull that open. This is just a straight handle. And you got this one is looped up kind of like a keychain would be, but no hardware. And then you've got this that's just like a little hand pocket. So you see the, the metal ones that you can get. This one's screwed in. It's a little bit uh, narrower at the base, a little bit wider at the top to make it pucker a little bit. So you can just put your hand in there and pull that one open. Um, this can just literally go into your current handles. You just make if you have a drawer pull that has two secure points on it. You could just replace it with a leather strap if you're kind of updating your kitchen cabinetry. And then this one's kind of neat. It's a, a clip and D that you just screw in with clip and D. a clip yeah, and D. Yeah, see it from overhead there. We've got a new uh, follower, Zap. So, and you just screwed in with Chicago screw. And just a little bit, a little bit more of a floppy handle, but yeah. So just some fun little ideas for some cabinetry if you guys are out there. And why is your handle so floppy? Why are your handles so floppy? Anyways, yep. And That's these, neat. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of kind of little leather accessories going into interior design these days. Um, and this is a really simple one. You could use your scrap leather for this and re-outfit your your cabinetry. Just jazz it up a little bit with some leather. It'd be really cool if you did some of the embossed leathers that we had and just yeah. lined it with some thin veg. Yeah. And you can you go make some really fun stuff. I think. And then this oh, one's I really like it. Yeah. Like this, this one is a little bit more complex. You know, you've got your stitch line here, and then this has been molded, and this is a, a flat mount, but you can still do it. So, anyways, just some fun cabinet ideas. And so since they're cabinet folds, would you, you need to use the a grade leather, or could you use uh, some scrap bags? You could definitely use some scrap bags. You could use anything, really. Yeah. Your cutoffs, your your yeah. over pieces. Those are made to order for scrap. No remnants. Dennis. For your remnants. remnants. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. You even said that earlier. Now you're popping off again with the scrap word. <laughs> I'm well, just seeing if you guys were listening. We were paying attention to you. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, so, all right. Uh, Latico is asking, is it hard to saddle stitch through wood? <laughs> on that, on that oh. handle that you had. <laughs> the hand. <laughs> is it hard to saddle <laughs> saddle stitch through that wood? I'd probably stitch your handle up before you oh, put yeah, it on the cab. No leather. Yeah. <laughs> But you That's know, if you if you have a class three or a four, or a Dremel, just use a little Dremel tool it, and it poke your holes with the through. Dremel. It'll go through Kydex. I don't know if it would. You're probably going to tear the thread up with all the grains and the yeah. the fibers and the wood. That would. I mean, give it a shot, guys. But it's probably going to explode for you. Yeah, and we don't stand behind any machinery. You stitch lumber. With. <laughs> <laughs> That's not part of the limited lifetime warranty. <laughs> Avoid that. You're stitching wood, but we are not going to stand behind. 
Maybe really thin. You got some really thin. Don't yeah. stitch wood with your machine, Liz. You can stitch Kydex. I feel like you could. You yeah. can. I've done that. One. Yeah. I don't know what I mean. Heavy needle, heavy thread. You know. I and could you go slow. <laughs> can you use a fishing line with it? Hundred pound test. What? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do this. <laughs> Leather Machine is watching. We're sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if you start getting phone calls from Only people. Only use up to 10 pound so test in your sewing machines. Yeah. Leather Machine, if you're watching this and you disagree, you need to come down here and be on our next video. <laughs> <laughs> Bring us a lot of machines. Like yeah. You know. All right. You got your edges all done up? You got them all done Looks up? Looks good. Just waiting for it to, to oh, what happened there? dry a little bit. What happened where? My oh, we're, look, we're teeny in the corner. Wrong. That's weird. There we go. Uh, yep. Looks great. Nice. Obsolete, useless tool. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody said their cousin makes tiny saddles to go on top of drawer pulls. Tiny saddles? That would be a tiny saddle if it's on top of a drawer pull. Oh my. That's a, I would like to, I would love to see a picture of that. Let's see. Tom said you have to be over 70 to have a key holder. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I punched my holes off center somewhere. Yeah, you I really was, did. I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> we'll just pretend that that's close. We'll look at it from, look how great this piece looks oh, from far away. It's beautiful. The further away you get, the better it looks. That's what they say about me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what are we doing? Uh, do we know what we're doing next week? If Andy's ready, we, we're going to try some moccasins. If he's not ready, then we'll do it the next week. So if Andy's not ready next week, what are we going to do? Uh, didn't, didn't he have an idea? Oh, we have that We have that uh, shepherd's, shepherd's pouch. Mm -hmm. Oh, the yeah, shepherd the pie shepherd, pouch. shepherd knife sheath. Yeah, yeah. The shepherd's sheath. Yeah. And what else? Yeah. Oh, we talked about doing a, a, mouse, a mouse pad. With some tooling on it, talking about talking about tooling a little bit because we we're just going to use a little corner piece. You know, one, one of those craft. Me. When we're here, carve rights. Asking about what we're going to do next week, and you start naming off all these things. I'm wonder. I'm getting really confused <laughs> and scared. <laughs> Are you not even going to come in next week? I'm just, yeah, that could be the case. And then we we're going to make a whole saddle next week yeah. in two videos. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the part that's really worrying me. Oh, man. <laughs> no, but we will be back. We'll do something, week. by golly. We'll be here next week. We'll we be will. here next week, and we'll we do something with leather, probably. Yeah. So just, just keep your eyes peeled. Keep watching out for those 21 days. We are several days into it. <laughs> um, there are several more days to go. Um, and then just be aware that once we hit the end of the month... Um, you know, you'll the, the, the last sale is November thirtieth, and that is the last day to take advantage of those things. So Do you know how crazy this is gonna be? We're gonna be doing that's a Tuesday. Monday is the Cyber Monday sale. Yeah. Wow. This coming Monday? No, 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 no. next one. A week from Monday. The one after Thanksgiving. One right after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Black Friday's gonna have some good stuff um on it. Yep, we keep adding to our Black Friday special. We added so a new item yesterday. Yeah, we we found a really pretty awesome piece of leather that, that we're going to put on there um, for a really good deal for you guys. Oh, the challenge so. the challenge bags are due the 30th? Yep, the challenge bags will be due on the 30th. So for those of you guys, hopefully everybody has pretty well gotten theirs. I know, I think we sent out a couple more this week, um, but those should all be showing up. So for those of you that bought the $15 challenge bag, don't forget to get those little items made and posted to social media using the hashtag... SLC 15 Challenge. SLC 15 Challenge. That's the one. Uh, yeah. So we'll be back next month. Um, not Monday. We're not going to be here Monday. We'll be back next Wednesday with something. We will not be here Thursday again. Friday we'll be back with something else. Or maybe the same. We'll see. <laughs> And then Monday we the We still may be trying to decide what we're going to do with. <laughs> That'll be Black Friday next. <laughs> yep. Next Friday is Black Friday. Friday. Next Friday. And then Cyber Monday, guys. Tony and I are pretty excited. Tell all of your friends five hours of sales. So There's we're going to be a surprise on Black Friday for oh. the uh, one of the items is going to be a surprise box. Ooh, a surprise box. Wow. So, yeah. Anyways, keep your eyes peeled. Um, if you haven't already, go to the website. 
and sign up for those email newsletters for the 21 days so that you know what's coming out or just, you know, come check in every couple days on the website to see what we've added to those sales. And uh, we appreciate you joining. So have a great weekend. See Bye, you guys. Everybody. Bye.